Chair recognizes Representative Stevens. That was a, I didn't do so well for a morning order. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Ladies and gentlemen of the House, sometimes we don't put a face on exactly what trauma is. We've been talking about it for a while, so with your permission, Mr. Speaker, I'll show a short video. Breaking news tonight, a developing story at this hour, 7.30 this evening, the worst of all possible fears in a community, an explosion and an awful fire at the sugar refinery. My husband is in there watching TV and he was flipping through the channels and he said, the sugar refinery just blew up. I said, holy cow, I, I gotta go. And I just knew that there was going to be a lot of people there because the change of shifts for everybody. So I knew at least there would be a minimum of 60 people. And just got my truck and went. I got victims coming out of front. Multiple victims. And then my cell phone rang, and it was uh, the police chief, Burko. He said, I am at the scene. Here is what I see. People are severely burned. This is not a drill. Um, we need to go into action now. And shortly after that, I received a phone call from the chief nursing officer to alert me, and I was already on my way to the hospital. And I started activating the telephone tree, calling my nurse managers, telling them to come in. But most of them already were on their way. I was at home, about to read my four-year-old a bedtime story, and the phone rang. My husband said it was Karen Watts, our chief nursing officer. Her words to me was, Maggie, this is the real deal. I flipped on the radio and heard the radio traffic and, and knew that we were in for a long night. I had just sat down to start eating supper when I got a phone call. It was pretty scary. You know, we tried to, I told them to start making phone calls and let's start getting everybody mobilized and start bringing in the crew. I was at home, uh, actually getting my four-year-old daughter out of the bathtub when my phone rang and said that we had a major incident and that they needed all the lieutenants and field supervisors to come in and we had an MCI, a mass casualty incident. So I came down to the emergency department and freaked out. <laughs> Tried to figure out, you know, what my team's got to do, where we got to go, who can I get to come in. I didn't have to call anybody before I noticed there were about 30 people here to help me out. We got our stuff ready to go, and it wasn't but just a couple of minutes. They went ahead and dispatched us to the scene. Go ahead, 11. I got a call about 10 minutes after the explosion and, uh, from our communications center, and they told us that we possibly had an explosion at the sugar refinery and that there may be as many as 150 people involved. Having worked at the hospital earlier that day, I knew there was an ambulance available. So I went by the hospital and picked up that ambulance and another team member, and we went directly to the scene of the explosion. So this was going to be the biggest disaster that I had ever taken part in, something we've, you know, talked about. We certainly practice for these kind of issues, but it was a very scary thought. We all know a lot of people who work at the refinery. The third trauma surgeon then arrived was Dr. Frank Davis, who, was, who then decided to go out to the scene of the site, because that front end uh, impact can tell you, do we have 50, do we have 100, do we have 1,000 patients? When I first arrived, there were probably 25 or 30 uh, gurneys out under the ambulance uh, bay. There were probably eight or nine ambulances that had backed in that were unloading uh, ambulances. Uh, patients, uh, most of the ones I saw were clearly severely burned. These people that came out walking with some of the most severe burns that I've ever seen. So, you know, immediately we're thinking about that these are definitely life-threatening injuries and, you know, they've got to be treated immediately. LifeStar responded directly to the scene and they transported patients to Memorial. We landed behind the uh, elementary school gym and that was our staging area and we transported the people initially to Memorial to the trauma center that EMS brought to us by ambulance. 
patients actually rolled off of the ambulance, um, the gurney, then I was essentially the first one to see them and decide where they should be placed. As the first ambulances rolled in, we kept trying to keep track of what kind of bed availability there was in the emergency room so that these victims would have somewhere to go. I got here about five minutes before the first patient and the first four or five patients all arrived at the same time. I expected more mass chaos, but it was actually very organized. We got everyone into a room, um, got them taken care of. What was remarkable is that our medical director who was in charge, um, Dr. James Ramage, he was so calm and that really influenced the whole team. And, you know, he delegated and assigned responsibilities. Everybody was in their rooms working. About four or five patients would arrive simultaneously and it came, it, it seemed in waves and thinking about it, I, I guess according to the blast injury, we didn't know if anyone had actually died at the scene at that point, but we could tell from the first wave we had very severely injured patients. Go inside. West side of the building. West side of the building, guys. West side of the building. We saw people from 25% total body surface area burns all the way up to 80, 85, 90 percent. Burn patients certainly require a lot of care. They can't regulate their body temperatures from, from the burn injuries. Um, you have to worry about their airway, particularly with a blast as well. They can have internal airway burns. The staff here all pulled together. It did not matter where you worked, what area was your expertise. Everyone pulled together and did exactly what was needed to be done. There were folks lined up on the walls asking, what can I do to help? What can I do to help? You had neonatal nurses that showed up. You had peds nurses. You had people from uh, human resources. We had um, a registrar who, um, down in the ER, they were taking someone out to the helicopter to fly them to Augusta, and she, uh, they needed somebody to carry an oxygen tank. And so she just picked it up and went with them to the helipad and carried the oxygen tank. Everyone was very calm. Uh, volunteers had come in, people had stayed over from an earlier shift. Uh, other employees had come in from home. Uh, but we immediately set about organizing what we were going to do. We are good in a crisis. We have great people. You know, this building is, is just technology without the people, and our people are superior. They are not only great in a crisis, but they're great in everyday work. And they pulled together and said, what do we need to do? We'll do it. There was uh, at least, you know, three or four residents in each room every time a new patient came through the door. and. We were either intubating the patients, putting large bore IVs into the patients, getting IV fluids, putting ultrasounds on the patients' bellies to make sure that they weren't bleeding internally. Um, I actually described it to Dr. McGuire as an orchestra, um, just performing in sync, because that's exactly what it looked like. There were 60, that was the number he had, 60 people that they were still trying to account for at this time. Media, of course, is wanting to know what's happening. And they're staying in their place, but they're saying, we need some information. So that was all going through there, finding the right person, which fortunately I did with, with Dr. Goldstein to get out there and, and talk to the folks. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Sometimes you need to put a face whenever we're trying to decide where we're going to spend our money even in d tough times but I want to introduce somebody in the gallery real hero in this accident and this could have been in Augusta and Macon, Atlanta, Columbus, anywhere in our state uh, Dr. Fred Mullins from Augusta is with the Burn Center there I just wanted you to see somebody that really treats people I hope you'll honor him And ladies and gentlemen, I got the best for last. Um, a year ago today, or th very close to this time, we had a, an incident in Savannah, and uh, it, it's a real testament of what trauma centers can do, and we all want to pray that we got one close to us. I have with us today Mr. Lawrence Manker, Jr., from, uh, down, was down in Savannah, who's now been for a year recuperating. And ladies and gentlemen, in six months, he was in that explosion. He's going back to school. Ladies and gentlemen, would you help me honor Mr. Lawrence Maker and his family? Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I'll yield the well.